Now, this is an issue I've been really worried about for some time, and I think what it is is really, I wrote a book called Everybody Wants to Rule the World, and it was really about the digital divide that was coming up. And in that digital divide, the big companies got bigger and the smaller companies were kind of thrown out of that. And this was pre-COVID, pre-Gen AI. And with Gen AI, what we actually have is a situation where if you want AI to succeed, you need lots of data, lots of compute power, you need lots of power, you need large networks of information, and only the large might win. And so we're in a situation where there's a lot of social inequity that actually is going to occur. Big companies are going to get bigger. Startups are going to be dependent on these larger companies and their networks. Uh, it's going to be hard to get access to PC, you know, GPUs and TPUs that are going to happen in the future. And governments are going to have more control over individuals, right? And I'm a little bit worried about that. Are you? Right? That, that's a real concern. How do we fix that or how do we set policies is going to be the question. And so there's another area that's also important, which is really survivorship bias, right? So the companies that win are going to rewrite history. And that's what's going to go into the LOMs. And that's what people are going to learn from is what the winners have declared. And history is written by the winners, right? And that's only going to exacerbate that. And I'll give an example why this is important. Let's say in 2050, you know, a sonic plane is flying to New York, gets a bird strike. Uh, computer says, you know what, you probably should just land this thing over here and just abort right? Let everyone die. That's going to be a huge issue. But you know what? Sometime in the 2000s, there was this guy named Captain Scully. And he decided that, you know, despite all odds, we're going to land a plane on the Hudson. And we're going to make sure that humans survive. And there's a 0.0001% chance that you could actually survive. Who in the room would take this chance? We're humans. We would. We'd all take that chance, right? Because we want to live. Now, Invention and innovation and what's happened in this world is mainly a lot of accidents. You know, professor bumps into something, beaker bumps into someone else, you bumped into someone in the room, you talk about it. A lot of our innovation is serendipity, right? And we're going to wipe that out, right? So not only are we going to have this big company versus small company, governments over individuals, we're going to lack that human intuition. We're going to lack innovation. And I'm really worried about that. Now, cyber tax is a different story. Right? The cyber attacks are getting better. Right? You know that phishing thing? It wasn't like Brian Monahan like on Bank of America kind of got spoofed with his own voice where someone called him and spoofed to be him? There's going to be more of that. We have this potential of creating exponential amounts of misinformation and disinformation that we can't control. We need AI to go after AI, and our bots are going to be fighting other bots. During COVID, think about what happened. That was the beginning of the first set of AI attacks. There are a lot of things I can't talk about, many of you in this room can't talk about, but everybody had a good offense, nobody had a good defense. That's all we can say. And it was brutal, the types of attacks that were happening. And that was just the first generation. Those were tests to figure out what the future was going to look like. Those were tests that were going to see what future cyber attacks are going to be. And so we're basically in a world where all these generative AI models are going to create new types of attacks and go after each other. But that takes us to tech policy and really what happens when we're in balkanized environments. Europe's gonna have their own rules. The Middle East's gonna have their rooms. India's gonna actually create their own environments. California, of course, we're gonna create our own rules. That's what we do, right? You know that. <laughs> so that's kind of how it's gonna happen, right? So what do we get to real ethics? How's that gonna work? We all have different viewpoints. And so we get into a situation where the rules aren't gonna be the same. You know, good news, the White House got together with a bunch of tech companies to decide that at least we'll watermark what's going to be generative AI, what's going to be created by AI. That's good. That's a good start. But we need a lot more, right? And ethics are hard. Every country has very different sets of ethics, what's right or wrong. We saw that with what happened with DNA, right, and our ability to actually modify and create things in CRISPR. We're going to need the same set of rules. We're going to think about what kind of policies humanity is going to need, what different types of governments and systems are going to look at in terms of what will work for them. And more importantly, what does privacy look like in the future? Can I walk into a room, be disconnected, and not be seen as a terrorist? Think about that. Today, you walk into the UAE, if they do the 27-point facial analysis, the gate analysis, and they discover that you're not in any database, you're picked up in 10 minutes or less. It's a very, very different world. And I think those are some of the concerns I have. Thank you very much.